And here to tell us a little more about the challenges of developing intelligence is the man trying to create Robo Sapiens, Mayon's maker Manfred Hill. Welcome to Tomorrow Today. Welcome. Now, it's quite amazing what Mayon is able to do, but would you really call it intelligence if a machine just reacts to an impulse? <laughs> of course, it very much depends on the point of view. But uh, the point is, to us, most uh, intelligent things are like playing chess or something different. But for a roboticist, the, the easy task like stabilizing the body or making a simple movement is uh, very uh, complex. And so I would say, yeah, um, in this regard, uh, the, the robot is intelligent. It behaves in relation to the environment. Uh -huh. So also like an uh, ant, for example, following a scent trail would also display a certain intelligent behavior. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you call it swarm intelligence also. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Reacting to the environment uh, is the key word. And you made a very wonderful experiment because you put your Mayan up on stage um, and he was becoming a musical star in an opera called <laughs> My Square Lady. And here we'll take a look at a few pictures. Um, Mayan was actually supposed to learn and then interact with the singers on stage. Did that work? Yeah, that did, to my surprise, uh, work out pretty well. So they were singing and conducting and taking a few steps. Uh, the robot has been disassembled and reassembled on stage while uh, it was switched on. So it, it really it worked pretty well. There has been some mistakes or a breakdown in the right leg, only in one performance. Uh, but all in all, it was really a torture to the mechanics uh, because, I mean, before the uh, shows, there have been so many rehearsals and we had to fix the robot a lot. Okay, and did he sometimes maybe even surprise you with his behavior? Yes, I remember in the second performance, he was just attached to a, to a funny white hat. Yeah. Uh, although we thought he would find the singers more interesting, but, well, it can happen. Okay, and I mean, you're aim was to find out more about human intelligence. So did Mayon actually tell you something about human intelligence and behavior? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's a loose coupling. But the way we are working is that we are implementing um, perceptual systems and then let go and see how the um, attentional frame gets together. So the different channels like hearing, seeing, being touched uh, are all in place. And the one who wins or which wins is always different. So now, right now, we are looking into the data in the learned memories of the robot. And this is quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, so the experiment actually goes on. Yeah. Um, how long will it take till robots can compete with us humans? Well, I mean, there are already robots or even mobile devices who are very good at specific things. But I mean, if you are talking of a, a fully sized humanoid in the household or wherever, this will probably take uh, decades, not only years. And at some point, we might even reach the stage where robots and artificial intelligence actually start optimizing themselves. And so the evolution of intelligence speeds up even more. I believe yes, but uh, others will say different uh, answers to that. Uh, OK, so the robots will take over one day. Well, I'm, I'm hoping for a, for a nice coexistence, I'd say. <laughs> Okay, that actually uh, relates to what a, a viewer wrote on our Facebook page because uh -huh. he said he trusts robots more than humans. Will robots be better people one day? Well, I trust my own more than some humans, but all in all, it depends on your friends and you can choose them, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you'd like to find out more about intelligence research in robotics, then head for our SciTech page where we're looking at the topic in depth this week. Check it out. Thanks a lot for the talk, Manfred. Thank you.